Why is Denver Broncos rookie wide receiver Marvin Mims in line for a big game on Sunday against the Chicago Bears? Why is he our player to watch? You're going to get that and much more in today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Broncos rookie wide receiver Marvin Mims could be in line for a massive game here against the Chicago Bears on Sunday. We'll dive into our players to watch. We'll talk about our keys to victory on today's episode of Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country for tuning in, making us your first listen of the day. Every single day you can get this podcast for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. So do us a favor, hit that subscribe or that follow button down below so you never miss out on a day's worth of Broncos news, content, coverage, analysis, and more. I'm Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports. Today's episode of the show is brought to you by the Game Time app. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Lockdown NFL for $20 off your first purchase today, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. One thing that is guaranteed is that the Broncos will be looking to get their first win here on Sunday against the Chicago Bears, but they're going to have to do it a little undermanned on the defensive side of the ball, an area where, hey, that's been the sore spot for the Broncos so far here this season through four weeks of action, maybe excluding week one against the Raiders where they held Josh Jacobs to limited yardage and output there. But Denver is going to be without Josie Jewell this week and obviously suffered a groin injury in Sunday's loss to the Miami Dolphins. And I think in particular, one thing I want to keep Broncos fans updated on, when I did an episode on yesterday's Locked On Broncos, one thing we had talked about with Josie is, okay, hey, what is he doing over there on the side field? He's moving well. He's stretching. I don't know if this is going to be something that holds Josie out for weeks, but he was moving really well, like I mentioned, on the side field. So we'll see. We'll have to see next week where he's at when Wednesday's practice comes around as the team will prepare for the New York Jets then. But, you know, we'll, we'll monitor Josie's status in the meantime. But this is the perfect opportunity now, as it is official, that Jewel has been ruled out. Drew Sanders will get his first career start here in the National Football League this Sunday against the Bears. And I think one of the things we have to talk about here with Drew Sanders Look, last week against the Dolphins, he had a rough showing, right? So did everybody else here. And I think there are some people who are down on Drew Sanders because of that game. Think about it from this perspective, though. And this has got to go back to where the Broncos just have to have these guys a little bit more better prepared. Like, hey, next man up, you got to always be ready if you're in that situation here. And unfortunately, it just was not the right opponent, not the right speed to go against that. Uh, unfortunately, made Drew Sanders not look comfortable last week. But because of Jules' injury, Sanders has gotten all the reps this week. I'll be very curious to see if he's going to be the Mike or the Will linebacker. My guess would be Singleton slides to the Mike backer position. Drew Sanders goes to the Will, but he's going to get his first career start here on Sunday in absence of Josie Jewell. So, you know, how does he do now that he's gotten a full week of reps in at the inside backer position? How does that maybe impact Denver on special teams with certain players? I'm very curious to see what comes down the pipe here, here for the Broncos. We already know. Frank Clark is going to be out of this game here. He could be back next week against the New York Jets. Mike Purcell officially ruled out as well with rib injury that he sustained in the Broncos loss to the Miami Dolphins last Sunday. He didn't participate all week in practice here. So now we officially know this means that the Broncos defensive line, an area really where their defense, you've kind of had some concern about them stopping the run the last couple of weeks. More importantly, generating some push up the middle from the uh, pressure standpoint, it hasn't happened there. So now Mike Purcell, who has arguably been their best guy doing that, he's going to be out of this game. So keep an eye here, maybe a handful of guys. Keep an eye on Tyler Lancaster. He could be elevated on Saturday to the from the practice squad to the active roster, one of those game day elevations. Keep an eye on him. Keep an eye on P.J. Mustafa as well. And also Elijah Garcia, who is on the active roster, could see a little bit more of an increased role here on the Broncos' defensive line against the Chicago Bears' offense that's really struggling to find their footing. And this is not the type of game you can afford to let the Chicago Bears' offense get right. And the Broncos' defense has to find a way to be on the receiving end of them getting right against the Bears' offense here. So that's something to keep an eye on here. Now, I think really the bigger question here, folks, and this is really going to loom, I think, maybe a game-time decision. We might find out a little bit earlier, maybe on Sunday morning here, but I'm very curious to see what happens here with Justin Simmons. Now, as we talked about here on Lockdown Broncos this week, 
Justin returned to practice on Wednesday and Thursday. He was a limited participant, meaning he participated in individual specific drills. And watching him, he's moving really well, high point in the ball. Friday's practice was a little bit different going out there for the media viewing portion here. Justin was over on the side field, not dressed. He was stretching and doing workouts with guys like Baron Browning, Greg Dulcich, Mike Purcell, Kwan Williams, Alex Palcheski, Josie Jewell, and everybody else has been dealing with injuries or is on PUP or IR right now. He was over there working with those guys. And so for us, we're like, okay, well, he was limited two days in a row, and then he was DNP. Does that mean he's going to be out? But the official injury designation here released by the Broncos to us following Friday's practice says that Justin Simmons is listed as questionable for Sunday's game. So I can maybe look at it this way, right? Because usually what you see throughout the week here, and, and you might see a guy DNP one day, limited one day, limited the other day, questionable. Justin's been in the league so long, and I think Denver knows him well enough, obviously, that maybe he could be a limited participant two days in a row. Maybe they gave him Friday as a DNP, see where he's at, see how he's feeling on Saturday morning. And then maybe that kind of some juice and some incentive say okay hey if he's feeling good okay he's going to play on Sunday if not all right we're going to hold him out another week so there is a chance that the Broncos could be without Justin Simmons for two consecutive weeks here we'll continue to monitor here and obviously we'll have you covered on the lockdown Broncos post game report on Sunday following the game here but if Justin Simmons is out of this matchup you have to keep an eye here on Delarian Turner yell once again the Broncos want to see what they have with him and it's been a rough couple of weeks but he's a young guy who has very minimal NFL reps in the regular season. This gives the Broncos pro personnel department a chance to maybe give him some more looks. And he's also gotten some reps in practice. So more than likely, if Justin's unable to go, you'll see Delarian Turner yell. You could see Isang Bassey playing some safety here this week for the Broncos as well. So if you're a fan listening or watching this podcast here and you're trying to figure out what's going on on Sunday, make sure you pay attention to these things, these storylines, as they follow through here with this Broncos football team. But Broncos country. One thing we are going to talk about, Sarah Bettinger and myself coming up here in just a moment, we're going to talk about the Broncos players to watch on offense and defense against the Chicago Bears. You're going to get all that on today's brand new episode, Locked On Broncos. Today's episode of Locked On Broncos is brought to you by our friends over there at DoorDash. Love the convenience of getting what you want right to your door? With DoorDash grocery delivery, you can stock up for the week or order last minute cravings conveniently from the palm of your hands on your phone. You've trusted DoorDash to deliver your restaurant favorites, and now you can get grocery delivery that actually delivers too. With thousands of grocery stores to choose from, you'll find the best in your neighborhood and boost your local economy with each and every order. You'll get exactly what you ordered or will make it right, so sit back and enjoy quality groceries just like you picked them yourself. Want even more value? You can save on all your grocery and restaurant favorites with a $0 delivery fee on all eligible orders with a Dash Pass membership with easy substitutions right in the app and best in-class customer support, DoorDash delivers groceries exactly how you want it. So get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to a $20 value when you use code LOCKEDONNFL at checkout. Limited time offer, terms apply. That's 50% off up to $20, no minimum subtotal, and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code LOCKEDONNFL. Don't forget that's code LOCKEDONNFL for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. Have you ever had a frustrating ticket buying experience? Well, the Game Time app can be the relief that you are looking for here today when you want to go see the favorite events, the biggest events in your area. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets for your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events that are going on near you. They have things like last-minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. Plus, it's easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event That is going on in your area. The Game Time app, they're obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last minute seats. Find exclusive flash deals and sponsor deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Take you and the family out for a nice event on a Friday night or if you want to go to the game here where the Broncos take on the Chicago Bears On Sunday, make sure you go check it out, the Game Time app. With Zone Deals, you pick the section, and Game Time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings, and the Game Time guarantee means that you'll always get the best price. And if you find tickets in the same section and roll for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKDOWNNFL for $20 off your first purchase. 
Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on NFL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Who are our players to watch offensively and defensively? Cody, we have to pick some defensive players for this segment here, but players to watch against the Chicago Bears for the Denver Broncos this coming weekend. We are going to make our selections, and we want you to do so as well. But before we go any further, got to give a huge shout-out and say thank you to every single one of you that makes Locked On Broncos your first listen of the day. Every single day, we're so honored that you choose to make us part of your day. So you know you can find us free and available everywhere that you get podcasts, as well as you can watch the show on YouTube, and that's where you can sound off in the comment section. Let us know your players to watch for the Broncos offensively and defensively. Cody, let's start with your picks here. Who are you looking for specifically this weekend for the Denver Broncos? If if, if the Broncos are going to be bad, we got to have some individual players to watch, right? Or maybe players that can help this team get back on track. I mean, it's a guy who's been the bright spot for them so far through the first three weeks of the season. We talk about most explosive player that Denver has right now on offense. It's Marvin Mims. Let's see more of the Broncos rookie pick. And earlier this week, Sean Payton was asking about, if, is Marvin Mims part of the game plan even more here? And he said, yes, he is. But here's the thing. As we've talked about it here on the show, you have to find a way to get the ball in this kid's hands. You know, whether it's in the slot, whether it's on the outside, whether it's on the end around, as we've seen. But it's got to be for more than just 15 snaps here, Sarah. We know how dynamic he is as a kick returner, punt returner. We've seen how dynamic he is on the offensive side of the ball as a receiver here. But I think the one thing we got to talk about here is this is a guy, in my opinion, that this week against the Chicago Bears defense. And when you look at it, okay, on that, you have Josh Blackwell, you have Eddie Jackson and Jalen Johnson. All of these guys have been on the injury report with either a foot or hamstring injury this week. Marvin Mims is fast as hell. Get this guy the ball, create some opportunities for him. And look, if he's scaring the Chicago Bears defense to where they're really focused on him, guys like Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, they're going to have success here. I think it's paramount that you get Marvin Mims involved. For me, he is my player to watch on the Broncos' offensive side of the ball this week. I got to ask you, who is your offensive player that you have your eye on? That Broncos country needs to keep their eye on on Sunday's game. I'm sticking with the wide receiver position, and I'm going with Jerry Judy. And I think that really every single week, I think we've seen a number of guys for this Broncos offense coming open at the receiver position and not necessarily getting the ball. And it's not because I think Russ is missing guys. I think it's, you know, they're finding another open receiver or they're going to another option. And these guys, are, there's multiple guys that have been open and things like that. So the scheme offensively having success, but Jerry Judy, I just feel like he unlocks another portion of this Broncos offense, Cody. We feel, I feel like we're still waiting for that big game from him this season. And even dating back into points of last season, really want to see him recapture. Remember the three touchdown game against Kansas city. I mean, this guy can do a lot of damage when you emphasize him in the passing game. So Marvin Mims, Jerry Judy, I think those two guys can really feed off of each other with Mims, his ability to blow the top off a of defense. Jerry can do those things as well, yeah. but man, I, I feel like he really feeds more into the, okay, if Marvin is going over the top and he's going to burn guys deep, Jerry, that really creates openings for him in the middle of the field to get the ball in space and do a lot of damage after the catch, which we know he can do. So offensively, He's definitely my guy to watch this week. In addition to, I love your pick of Marvin Mims there. Uh, you know, and I think another thing too, these guys are a byproduct of Russell Wilson, what he's been able to do. Look, and, and it, it just fires me up because you see on social media, we've seen it in the comments. I want to ask people, what are you watching, right? When they talk about Russ is holding them back. He's not holding them back. Russell Wilson is a big reason they've been successful on the offensive side of the ball this year. I mean, Sarah, yeah, he's had a couple of blunders here and there, but the reality is Russell Wilson hasn't hurt the Broncos offense in any way. He's given them chances. He's stood in the pocket. He's delivered against pressure, against contact. I We are seeing a lot of the old Russell Wilson, and look, we even saw a little bit of that play design against the commanders there from Sean Payton. I think he's going to be very selective with trying to set that up, but I think it is a part of the offense that we'll see a little bit more of as the season progresses here. But for me... Russ is finding these guys with confidence and he's understanding he's anticipating where they're going to be. And look, I think one thing we are seeing a little bit better of this year from Denver's receivers, you're seeing that route integrity, right? Guys are going to where they're supposed to be in terms of landmarks. And I think passing game coordinator, Johnny Moe is the players call him Johnny Morton. He's done a tremendous job here with these guys in terms of what they're able to do. And obviously you want to see Denver's offense 
be more sustainable. I think they have the opportunity to build toward that. We talked about last week, two touchdowns called back due to penalties, which unfortunate there's 14 points missed there, but these guys are eager. You know, I had a chance to talk to Russell Wilson a little bit briefly this week. And he's, he says that they're on the right track offensively and that they, they know they're going to get to where they need to be. And it's just, just got to lock in a little bit deeper. And so for me, Russell Wilson is making the Broncos offense go a little bit further here. Now let's shift gears here to the defensive side of the ball players to watch. And I think when we talk about this, this is always a tough one, right? Especially coming off a 70 point performance, a 50 point blowout here. I think everybody wants to see the entire defense respond here. But if we have to talk about maybe players who could have a big impact this week, Sarah, I want to ask you, who's a player you have your eye on for Sunday's matchup? I'm looking at Drew Sanders, the rookie linebacker, could be getting his first NFL start with Josie Jewell dealing with an injury. And I think Sanders has an opportunity to really show some improvement upon what we saw in week three, right? I mean, the Miami Dolphins, that's a tough draw for any young linebacker to have to go out there and get your first action. Those guys are so fast. You're having to read a lot. Obviously, I'm not I'm not saying Drew Sanders didn't do a lot of film study, but look, your preparation level might be a little different when you know you're starting a game. So I think that definitely for him, this is a big opportunity with hopefully Alex Singleton out there calling the shots as the 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 guy with the green dot. Now you have Drew Sanders who can go out there and do his thing, make some plays. I want to see him run sideline to sideline. I want to see him bat some balls down in coverage, maybe get a couple stops on third down, maybe rush the passer a little bit, Cody. So I think we could see a versatile role from him, but I like the idea of him getting kind of a full game of snaps to see, okay, what is the the vision? We get to see a little bit of it unfold early on for Drew Sanders, unfortunately at the expense of Josie Jewell being injured, but certainly you want to see what Drew Sanders can do and how he bounces back. I think this is also a great opportunity for Drew Sanders to maybe – play a little bit of a spy against Justin Fields there. I mean, that's one reason that Denver drafted him is because of his athletic ability, his ability to pressure and blitz. But I think he's also the guy that could be the spy. I think maybe if, I, if I'm reading into it, maybe Drew Sanders will be the wheel linebacker this week, right? You know, weak side linebacker doesn't have as heavy of responsibility as the Mike, even though the both positions are very important equally there. The Mike will probably have a lot more on their plate in comparison to the, to the wheel side linebacker. So I think that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, for defense, for me, I'm going to go with Jonathan Cooper here. He's the Broncos' leading sack producer so far this season. Had two in one game against the Washington Commanders. They're playing a little bit of a different offense this week here, Sarah, where with Justin Fields and them, I think he's only, yeah, they've allowed the second most sacks in the NFL offensively. Justin Fields has been sacked 13 times so far through three weeks. Denver, Russell Wilson has been sacked 10 times, right? So you see some opportunities here. The Chicago Bears are not designed offensively to be like what Tua Tonga Bailoa was. Tua got the ball out of his hands at the quickest rate so far, and he's done that so far through three weeks of the NFL season, getting the ball out of his hands faster than anybody else. Justin Fields, it's not like that. There's times on film with Fields where you're seeing him drop back and he's holding onto the ball. Nobody's getting open, but it's taking time. But that's where you have to really be careful with the off-schedule stuff against Fields. So for me, Jonathan Cooper, I think, could be in line for a big game this week as the Broncos outside linebacker. They're going to need some help, though. Look, I, I think so many people, they look at, okay, well, Denver hasn't gotten many sacks here. It's not just the outside linebacker's responsibility to get sacks, and so much of their production is contingent upon the interior of that defensive line. Denver needs simply more here, and we're going to be very blunt. Denver needs more from DJ Jones, who they paid money to a couple years ago in free agency. He has not performed like the guy that we saw last year. Zach Allen has not gotten off to the start he wanted. And Jonathan Harris, those three guys have to be better, and that'll help the outside linebackers like Randy Gregory, Jonathan Cooper, Nick Benito, and whoever else gets in the mix. We might even see a little bit of Ronnie Perkins this week, maybe. There's always a possibility. But for me, Jonathan Cooper is my player to watch on defense. I love that pick, and I would love to see some additional guys off the edge like Perkins that you mentioned. I mean, maybe just switching things up just a little bit. Remember a few years back, Vic Fangio, I think it was his first year with the team, Cody. The Broncos got... I can't even remember the team that they played against, but they got rocked pretty good early in the season. And then the next week he came out, he made some changes. He made some changes in the defensive backfield. He remember he put Alexander Johnson into the lineup at linebacker. He made some like kind of smaller changes, but just, just wanted to see, Hey, let, let's see if a change here does some good for some guys. And it worked out. So I kind of want to see what is Vince Joseph's playing there, or what is maybe if it's got to come from Sean Payton and he's saying, look, this guy's got to play if it's Riley Moss or if it's maybe Devon Key coming off the practice squad. I don't know what the case may be, but whatever it is, maybe some guys on the D-line, Elijah Garcia. We talked about that early in the week. 
maybe he gets more opportunities. So seeing other guys get opportunities and just maybe you got to scrap that formula that you had and say, all right, let's do some different ingredients and see if this works better. Well, Broncos country, in terms of the Broncos finding ways to come up with a victory, we're going to dive deep into our keys to victory that we're going to share. Make sure you share your players to watch as well if you're watching on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. You're going to get all that on today's episode, Locked on Broncos. Today's episode of Locked on Broncos is brought to you by our friends over there at eBay Motors. And our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked on Fantasy Football host Vinny Iyer to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week all season long. Whether you're prepping for a daily draft or you're scouting the waiver wire week to week, every single week, we're going to provide you with players that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. So let's see who Vinny has picked out for us on this week's eBay's Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. Jacksonville Jaguars wide receiver Calvin Ridley has the classic rebound and revenge opportunity in London in Week 4 on Sunday in a matchup against his former team, the Atlanta Falcons. Now, the Jacksonville Jaguars love playing in London. They've always had an advantage. They've been winners over there in London, except last year against the Denver Broncos. But Calvin Ridley has been very quiet with Jacksonville's passing game, slumping the past two weeks, but he will return more to his stellar week one debut form that we saw with his new team. The Jaguars will do a better job of scheming him open across the pond and making his massive target volume from Trevor Lawrence count big time again, especially this weekend. Vinny Iyer from Locked On Fantasy Football is going to help you win your fantasy championship, and eBay Motors knows that a championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure that your ride stays running smoothly. Do you need a new brake kit for your vehicle? eBay Motors, they have them. You need LED headlights, a roof rack, bumpers, or whatever your baby needs. eBay Motors has it. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Plus, at these prices, you're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Once again, that's ebaymotors.com. Dot com eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. As we jump into the fourth quarter action on today's episode of Lockdown Broncos, we just wanted to say thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country for tuning in, making us your first listen of the day every single day. You can get this podcast or show for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. So thanks for rocking with us. Thanks for making us your first listen of the day every single day. Let's get to one of our favorite portions here. Every single week, we get to talk about keys to victory. If the Broncos can do these things, it increases their chance of winning on Sunday. Sarah, I'll let you kick it off here as we close out today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. When you look at what Denver needs to do to go into Soldier Field on Sunday to beat the Chicago Bears, get their first win of the season, what is it, in your opinion, you think that they have to do either on offense or defense? I think defensively, let's see this team create some havoc and be aggressive and get some get some turnovers there, right? I think the Broncos need to force some turnovers, get some opportunities for the offense. Look, when the defense isn't playing well, you're missing out on a number of different things. You're missing out on punt return opportunities for Marvin Mims. You're missing out on opportunities for your offense to go and, and cash in on uh, those additional possessions. You're missing out on time of possession battle. You're missing out on so much. I need the defense this week, Cody, against the Chicago Bears to be aggressive. Don't be playing all timid after what happened last week. We know it was bad, but like we've been saying, you kind of got to wash that taste out of your mouths and you got to move on, move forward, and be much better, much, much better this week against the Bears. Be aggressive out there. Be confident. Be confident in the way that you studied. Make sure that you know hey, the Bears, they don't have a good offense. And we need to, as a defense, we need to use this as an opportunity to get right. We've been saying that all week on this show. Like, who's going to be the team in this matchup to get right? Or what unit is going to be the one to get right between the Broncos defense or the Bears offense? I feel like the Broncos defense needs to take that bull by the horns and really just say, hey, we're going to be the ones to get right this week. We're going to be aggressive. We're going to be fast. We're going to create turnovers. And we're going to get opportunities for our offense and special teams even to go out there and make some plays. I can't help it. Anytime someone says be aggressive, I always go be aggressive, be e aggressive, right? That little <laughs> cheer that we hear back in the day. Denver's got to yeah. do it, right? And, and to your point, I agree. I think Denver defensively, they have to be aggressive, but also like in control, right? Controlled aggressiveness. How do you channel that though, right? And it's like Denver, I think some guys have been playing with their hair on fire, running around, but they're not taking great angles. They're not breaking down. And that's led to some big plays. 
Denver's got the capability to do it, but you got to get back to fundamentals. And really for Denver defensively, just watching practice this week, an individual period, that's really been an emphasis from the position coaches. It's getting back to fundamentals because the last couple of weeks, Denver has gotten away from that. They've gotten away from things that have you know helped them be successful in the past, but they, it, it's all controlled and players have to do their job, not worry about if you're the outside linebacker, you're not worried about what the inside linebacker is doing and vice versa. If you're a cornerback, you're not worried about what the defensive end is doing. You just have to do your job. And that's really getting back to basics. So I'm with you on that, Sarah, in terms of what the Broncos need to do defensively in order to come away with a victory against the Chicago Bears, a team that has had six total giveaways so far on offense this season. Denver desperately needs a takeaway. So can they get that this week? That's going to be huge. And I think a part of it too, right? We talk about the Bears defense. We, we did a little bit of a preview on yesterday's episode of the show. I think for Denver's offense here, I'm going to stick with it because this has been so important. It's worked, but Denver's had to go away from it. In one game against Miami last week, they went away from it when they shouldn't have against the Commanders in week two. And then in week one, they simply had the run game going, but were not able to have, I think, more extensiveness to it because they only had six possessions here. Pond the dang football here with Javante Williams and Samaj P. Ryan. Both of these guys have been very solid. And, and I also think they've been pretty good in pass protection as well. When we talk about passing situations, we've also seen running these guys, Javante, even used out of the backfield. He had a 17-yard catch yes, uh, in Sunday's game against the Dolphins before things really got out of hand. Javante is running like the old Javante, and he's got that confidence. He's got that bounce and that spring to him. Samaj is a great change of pace. And now, you can introduce Jaleel McLaughlin here again. I, I've said it before, and look, this is what Sean Payton told us in the offseason. We are going to run the football. Well, you know what? Run the football. Commit to it. it. And if you have a lead, that's where the running game should be more of an emphasis for them going forward is, hey, we have the lead. Let's maintain that. And I think so much of it, too, right? Maybe another key to victory is if you win the coin toss, don't defer to the second half. Just take the damn ball and go score on your first offensive drive there. Clearly, it has not been working. Denver is 3-0 and in coin tosses this season, but they're 0-3 coming out of halftime with the opportunity to do something with it. So for me, run the dang football with Javante, Samaje, and Jaleel McLaughlin. Maybe even on a couple of designs, get Russell Wilson involved here. If Denver does that, it opens up so much more for what they can do offensively. The offense, like I said, hasn't been the issue. They've been in bad positions because of the defense and the offense in week two, we can all say. Second half, they regressed a little bit. But we're seeing the things that they can be. Now you just got to stick with it. You got to make it part of who you are here. I'm very curious to see if this is something that Sean Payton's going to do. I am too, Cody. And I think the offense needs to kind of put that pressure on themselves, especially not everyone was here last year. But I mean, look, they, they've got to realize last year we put a lot on the defense. This year it looks like it could be on us. <laughs> So if you're like Cortland Sutton, like don't be don't be careless with the football out there multiple times in, in the same game, you know, and, and if you're Russell Wilson, you you drop the ball, you got to pounce back on it. Right. Remember against the commanders, he just kind of left it there, thought he was down, but he wasn't. The, the offense has to be much more on point, I think. Like you said, Cody, they're not the reason the Broncos are in this situation right now. They've been much, much better than what we saw last year, but also they've got their things right now that's like. Dang, like it, what what would have happened if, you know, Brandon Johnson would have been set? And I feel like he was. But I mean, if he would have been more set, you know, or if this, the 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 downfield pass interference on Brandon Johnson doesn't happen like this, these little things, the two fumbles by Sutton, the pass interference and the the, you know, illegal shift or whatever by Brandon Johnson and all the, the fumble by Russ against commanders, like all these different little things. It's like, yes, the offense should be allowed at times to make make a mistake or two but maybe they need to put a little bit more pressure on themselves in this game to say, Hey, we got to be, we've been pretty good. We got to be borderline perfect against the bears to make sure we get that win. Number one. I mean, looking back on it, Denver should be two and one at this point. Sarah, they should have beaten the Raiders in week one. They should have beaten the commanders in week two. Unfortunately they didn't. They let those games fall through their fingertips a little bit there. And now they're sitting here at zero and three, a win. And look, it's not going to change the season just yet, right? You got to win multiple because you have the Bears, then you have the Jets, then you have the Chiefs, then you have the Packers, then you have the Chiefs again, then you have a bye week, which, you know, hey, who knows where this team is going to be like, what reinforcements could be on the way. That's also something to monitor here. But Denver has a chance. Like, if you get a win here, and then let's say next week, you go and you get a win against the Jets, you have a little bit of momentum here. And, and all of a sudden, it's a little bit different. You know, you're sitting there at two and three versus, you know, maybe 0 oh and five. Denver can just go on a run, but you got to take it one week at a time. And it goes with perfecting the little things, making the adjustments that they haven't been making so far defensively. That has to change. And 
I think really the defense right now, everybody's eyes are on that side of the ball, and rightfully so. But Broncos country, make sure you share with us down below your keys to victory on offense, defense, even special teams. You want to sprinkle it in here. We appreciate you so much here with the Broncos. The next thing that we have up on deck in terms of what we're going to be talking about, we'll have the post-game report for you on Sunday afternoon following the game. Hopefully, the Broncos can get right and continue to try to build some momentum as the rest of the season is coming full steam ahead here. You're going to get that much more on Sunday's post-game report. Locked on Broncos.